Today, I want to walk through something. You saw the title. I want to talk about what's happening, the philosophy behind it. MK or controller, doesn't matter. This is doing more than you probably know. And as I go through this, I do encourage you to try it. There are different ways, but I want you to give it a try a couple specific ways. Headseeker, buffed. Perk description, body shots landed with this weapon increase precision damage for a short time. Historically, what Headseeker does, well, did, it saved the bullet time to kill, allowing the user to possibly get a more relaxed TTK for the weapon in a gunfight. Pulses have changed over the years. For some archetypes, little to no help. For some others, major help. If the TTK takes six bullets or two bursts, you can land an extra body shot sometimes. And Headseeker also had a very, very short window. It would work within the burst and within the burst only. Like if a high impact does 36 to the head, a body headshot headshot would go 22, 38, 38. It would reset, you could do it again. But Headseeker got updated. And again, I am once again asking you to trust me on this. Like, you know how hand cannons have things like opening shot, eye of the storm, they're dueling perks. Headseeker is the ultimate dueling perk for a pulse now. So the update, body shots now increase the precision multiplier and increase aim assist. Additional body shots reset the timer. It has a 0.55 second base timer and body shots while the perk is active resets the timer. I'm so confident in what this does. I did my solo run with the Headseeker Stars and Shadow. So confident in it. I went from zero to 16 to craft a syncopation with enhanced Zen moment in Headseeker. Here's what that means. And I'm gonna use a high impact as an example. Stars and Shadow, the first thing, the Headseeker damage alone on a high impact. If you were to go body crit crit, body crit crit, that's not even gonna down one resilience without Headseeker, it's not gonna do it. But for whatever reason, with the precision multiplier that it has, some crazy rounding happens, like I mean crazy rounding. So even though it's adding on your screen four damage, all of that rounding, in this same scenario with Headseeker, it can down seven resilience and lower. Whereas at base, it couldn't even do one. A four crit, two body for a 0.67. But here's the beautiful part. Well, there's actually two. A high impact pulse, one of the best archetypes in the game. One of the deadliest archetypes in the game. Very little competes with a 0.67. Like it claps almost everything. So the first thing here, it's a win-win type of situation. It's like a win-win-win type of situation. It did not do this before. If you land a body shot, you get increased aim assist. And whatever that number is, it's noticeable. And with a high impact, you want a two burst. So if you land all six crits, great. That's what you want to do. They're down. But if you land a body shot in that first burst, the next burst is juiced. And again, I don't know how much aim assist it gives, but it's tangible. You feel it. And keep in mind, MNK has more base aim assist than controller. I'm going to say it again. MNK 2, it has more aim assist than controller. So the second burst is a heat seeking crit magnet. It feels incredible. So even if you start off with a body shot, not only are you getting better aim assist to bend in crits on that second burst, you're now in that scenario where you can A, land easy crits to finish out the two burst, or B, even a second body shot on the second burst is going to down seven resilience or less. It's nuts. But another magical part, we have the precision multiplier. We have aim assist now. We now have the 0.55 second window. After you land that body shot and it can reset when you hit another body shot. The precision multiplier, like remember original Mag Howl, Magnificent Howl, Luna's Howl Not Forgotten? You could crit up one target and with how Magnificent Howl worked, it would work on the head and the body. So you'd have two targets, dot up the first one. The second one's gonna come up on your screen. You can go crit body and just delete them within the same magazine. Now this is nowhere near as strong, but it's the same type of philosophy. Like not as strong at all, but it does make a difference and it works. Again, before the cooldown for Headseeker was within the same burst. Now with this 0.55 seconds in between, you can land a body shot or even all body shots. The next burst is all gonna be Headseeker damage. The moment you hit a body shot, it's gonna reset. So you could body one target and if another target's there, the next three crits are gonna be increased Headseeker damage on them making the TTK easier. Basically just point and shoot at everything. And weird things happen, like syncopation. Since it shoots so fast, like you could go body crit crit, it starts doing the 34 damage. The next burst will go 34, 34, back to its base damage, like wild rounding. And like with scenarios like this, Radiant will be a two burst, like an easy two burst. So first thing I do recommend, the high impacts are one of the best. If you wanna try this, you can focus stars and shadow. Go to Shax if you have your Crucible Ingrams, especially if you've kept resetting, you're gonna get chances at multiple perk options. Find one with Headseeker. The main ones I've been using are Killing Wind Headseeker and then Pulse Monitor Headseeker. Now Pulse Monitor, again, I've always thought that it's S tier after it got buffed. It will refill your mag every gunfight. If you're taking damage before you even have your shields broken, it's gonna refill the mag. And on something with a slow reload, it goes a long way. But how this changes the dynamic, what I want you to take away, especially on a high impact pulse, 
right? Another good one to look for is going to be Premonition. It's Void from the dungeon. It can roll things like Moving Target Head Seeker, Killing Wind, but also Zen Moment. Zen Moment's really kind of interesting, and I did decide to do my Syncopation like that because it's becoming a laser beam with juiced aim assist on the second burst or after a body shot. I'm getting less visual recoil. It just feels like a magnet. It's amazing. But with these high impacts, maybe you have an old messenger. The goal is to two burst. And usually, like historically, if you have really high stability, it's kind of wasted on Headseeker because if the, the bullets are really grouped together, you're not really landing body shots. But with this change, your goal is to two burst. So if you have something like 70, 80, 90, whatever stability, really high stability, and it's a beam, that's fine. Because if you land a body shot at any point, there's that window, the next burst is gonna be a beam too. It's a win-win. As you're playing in 6v6, even 3v3, there's gonna be multiple targets. Of course, you're going for headshots, but if you land a body shot and there's another target, you're gonna hit him with big damage. It's been great. I've talked to people with both M and K and controller, and they've been loving it. There are some ones like Stay Frosty, it's getting ready to go away. It has Head Seeker. I'm pretty sure there's some in your vault that you've kept, or maybe you have some rolls. Bring them out and try them. But above all, on a high impact. So if you don't have Stars and Shadow, I recommend that you focus it until you get one with Head Seeker. Try it out. Now, the second one, I said there were a couple ways. With the new year, I haven't been getting red borders, much less a lot of rolls, but I'm getting ready to. A lot of people have asked me for this review, and that's going to be for a certain new pulse this season, Disparity. To be completely honest with you, I haven't even shot it yet. I have one roll that's heating up Swashbuckler. That seems fine, but this weapon's had a lot of buzz around it. I've even been told that I've crafted it wrong. I've even used it. But this pulse has something that no other pulse has. And as confident as I am in the ones that I've used with Headseeker, there's a very specific role that this one has. It is Eye of the Storm Headseeker. So putting it all together, this is a four burst. And a while back, they changed Headseeker to where it works. So it's getting more damage after that body shot. And just like the high impacts, Headseeker is going to ease that TTK of bullet time to kill. But this roll, you're going for the two burst. If you land a body shot, you have mega aim assist to land more crits. But on the other end of the weapon, we now have Eye of the Storm. So in a pure duel, like that's like the ultimate dueling weapon. Once I start getting my red borders, that's what I'm going for. I've already looked at it. It's got great perks. It's got no distractions. It's got kill clip. It's got Desperado, Headstone for stasis. There's a lot of good combinations, but I'm going to be crafting either Storm Headseeker, just knowing what I know of playing with this. It's incredible. That review is probably going to be a couple weeks because I still have to get the red borders. I'm going to try some other rolls and showcase some other rolls, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be the top one from me. In a duel, body shot helping, getting aim assist. As my health gets lower, I now have aim assist and accuracy. It's almost too good to be true. But for this video, I wanted to show you kind of how this perk has changed, how it's helping, and it is a great dueling perk. Even if it's not changing your TTK, which it never has, you really feel the aim assist help after that body shot. And you can double up on headshots after that on the same target doing more damage. It's just a nutty perk. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Headseeker down below. Have you tried it? What weapons are you liking it on? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.